Hello students. Today we will be discussing about quantum confinement star effect, both theoretical and experimental approach. So, what is quantum confined star effect? Already you should be knowing what a star effect means. It means that the splitting of atomic spectral lines because of the applied electric field. Now, the same thing is here also. Instead of atomic spectral lines, you are going to take a quantum confined system. Then apply electric field. So, the response of a quantum confined system to an external electric field is termed as quantum confinement Stark effect. This response can be linear or quadratic. This makes it a type of electro-optic effect. Now let us see the theory of quantum confinement star effect. Suppose I apply electric field along Z axis to a quantum confined system, then there will definitely be a change in the potential energy of the electron. So which can be written as delta E is equal to minus PZEZ, where PZ is the dipole and EZ is the electric field applied along EZ direction. Now I can write this PZ as minus E into EZ that is product of uh, charge of electron multiplied by that of the position or the direction. So delta E is equal to that minus goes away small e EZ capital EZ. So what we understand here is uh, there is a change in potential energy because of the applied electric field. So this is a theoretical approach to quantum confinement Stark effect. Now we will see further details in this regard. Now I am considering a semiconductor GAAS or in the place of AS I can take two materials aluminium and gallium with a ratio of 30% and 70%. Now, in this system, a quantum well of thickness of around 10 nanometer is considered in which I am studying quantum confined Stark effect, which means we are applying electric field and see what happens there. Now, you can see in the picture, one part is without field, the other part is with field. When I am applying field, I am applying in the range of 10 power 7 volt per meter. Now you can see both are drawn between position and energy. Position taken in terms of nanometer, energy taken in terms of milli electron volt. Now you can see uh, the conduction band and valence band shown without in the without field picture. Then inside the conduction band and the valence band, you can see the electron and the whole wave function. Now at the end, you can observe it is actually between heavy electron 1 marked as HH1 and electron marked as EL. Now at this point, all of you should know what heavy electron means. So for which I have to show you one more picture. Let us see that picture and then get back to this slide. You should be remembering the band structure of semiconductor which was discussed even in the first semester. So like how we draw a beautiful uh, straight line picture for conduction band and valence band, it won't be in the reality it will be as peaks and heaps. So you can see in the uh, second small picture showing the lowest conduction band and the highest balance band which will be marked as EC and EV respectively. The energy gap between EC and EV is termed as energy gap or band gap. Now, if the lowest conduction band and the highest valence band are in line with each other, that is the peaks, 
if they are in line with each other you call such a semiconductor as direct band gap semiconductor if the peaks are in not in line with each other then you call it as indirect band gap semiconductor also we know that direct band gap semiconductors are responsible for producing light now i am considering one such direct band gap semiconductor but in the nano range now you come for a bigger picture here so what happens here i am able to see in conduction band the lowest conduction band but for valence band instead of seeing one band i am able to see multiple bands they are marked as heavy holes light holes split off holes etc so this is a big change when we are coming down to nano scale in a semiconductor now what are these heavy holes light holes split off holes etc these are actually holes only but they have difference in their effective masses so because of change in effective masses they are termed with different terminologies as heavy hole light hole now they are also, once again they are self explanatory heavy hole means among the holes which are having heavy effective mass and light holes means which are lighter than the heavy holes these light holes and heavy holes are collectively observed in one place and if there is a shift for certain holes you call those as split off holes now the gap between the heavy hole light hole and the split off hole is also marked as delta which is called split off energy but the band gap is between conduction band and the valence band now this has to be kept in mind to understand quantum confinement stark effect picture now we will go back to the same slide to continue so what we have understood is we are not going to have one effective mass for all the holes there are going to be multiple values and because of that we are naming the holes in three different categories so this has to be kept in mind to understand further so now we will consider the picture see in the first picture without field we are showing the conduction and the valence band and also the electron and the hole wave function now when i speak about hole it is for h h1 which means heavy hole 1 and electron so the band gap is shown as 1462.4 milli electron volt and the electron wave function is approximately around 1455 milli electron volts now to this system i am applying electric field of the order of 10 power 7 volt per meter now you can see the quantum uh, wells that is uh, the conduction and the uh, valence band both of them are shifted linearly you should be remembering in the first slide we said the response of uh, uh, quantum confinement stark effect that is uh, the response of uh, uh, the um, wells are going to be linear or quadratic so for this system it is linear now you look at the electron and hole wave function previously it coincided well with the center line but now it is it is moving in the opposite direction it is going away from zero in the opposite directions in the uh, conduction band as well as in the valence band so this is one uh, prominent observation we make because of the applied field now you can see another uh, important observation the band gap the band gap is now coming down that is 1438.5 so you can call this as a red shift taking place so you at this point all of you should understand the meaning for red shift 
say E is equal to H nu. So, which can be written as Hc by lambda. So, if wavelength is coming down, sorry, if energy is coming down means wavelength is increasing. That is the meaning. So, whenever there is a wavelength increase, you call it as redshift. If the wavelength is decreasing, you call it as blue shift. So, this uh, uh, these things you should remember forever in your career because this will frequently keep coming. So, we are observing from uh, 1462, it falls down to 1438 milli electron volts, which means the energy is falling. See, at this point, you should also remember that we are only making observation. We are not manipulating anything, which means we cannot manipulate anything. Now, we are only simply observing. We are simply applying electric field to the system and see what is happening. Okay, it is um, giving a linear response and the band gap is coming down and the wave functions are shifted in opposite directions. All these are only observations. Okay, we are not manipulating anything. We are only trying to reason out what is happening. That's all. Trying to understand what is happening. That's all. Okay, now apart from this, one more observation has to be made. That is... The field breaks the symmetry and causes the electron and hole probability densities to shift in the opposite direction. The electron hole overlap at zero field is nearly perfect when it is in the zero field. When you are applying the field, then the, uh, it reduces, the overlap reduces to 0. 0.8. This is also an observation. So, this is quantum confinement Stark effect. So, small consolidation after applying field, you can see there is a linear shift in both conduction and the valence band. This is point number one. Number two is electron and hole wave functions are shifted in opposite directions. Number three is the band gap is coming down, which means there is a red shift observed due to application of electric field. Number four, the overlap between the wave functions was perfect when we were not applying electric field. On applying electric field, the overlap comes down to 0.38. Now we will see the experimental proof. I consider a PIN photodiode. You all know P photodiode is responsible for producing photo current taking light as the input. Now you know in the uh, PIN photodiode, I represent intrinsic region which is uh, between P and N region. So in this intrinsic region, we are constructing multiple quantum well and reverse bias is applied. Plots are drawn, that is graph are drawn between energy and the photo current, both without applying the external bias and after applying external bias. Before seeing the details of the graph, we will see the equation. The magnitude of the field is given by Ez is equal to Vbi minus V0 by Li, where Vbi is built-in voltage of the diode, V0 is the applied bias, Li is the thickness of the intrinsic region. Now we will see the picture. There are two graphs shown. Both are drawn between energy and photocurrent. In graph A, the external bias is 0 volt and in graph B, the external bias is minus 10 volt. This is a absorption spectrum. Uh, you can see three transitions shown in graph A. That is between HH1 to E1, heavy hole 1 to electron 1. Then LH1 to E1, 
light hole 1 to E1. Then HH2 to E2, heavy hole 2 to E2, electron 2. Now these three transitions are also observed in B, B graph. Please observe, note down, all the three transitions are there in B also. What you have to further note down is the energy. For all the three transitions compared to A in B, you are able to see lower value of energy, which means higher value of wavelength, which means there is a red shift. So, this is a very clear experimental evidence for quantum confinement Stark effect. Now, apart from these three transitions, in graph B, you can see two more transitions that is between HH1 to E2 and HH2 to E1. These are actually representing parity forbidden transitions, which are significant significance of quantum wells. Now, when we speak about this parity forbidden transition, this actually comes under selection rule. Though you do not know much details, briefly to speak, the selection rules uh, for uh, same like atomic uh, spectrum, even in uh, quantum wells, you are having certain selection rules. Now, the difference between whole subbands and the electron subband, if it is even, then it is not having parity forbidden transition, which means normal transition. If the difference between whole subband and the electron subband is odd, then it is called parity forbidden transition. And availability of parity forbidden transition is important when we are speaking about quantum wells. That is why the, that presence is also shown in the picture. So, what we understand from the overall thing is the quantum confinement effect which was theoretically approached just by considering a quantum well before applying electric field and after applying electric field what can take place was discussed in the theoretical part and the same is done experimentally also. So, experimentally also quantum confinement Stark effect is getting proved. Now, let us list out a few of its applications. This is used to control the shape of the absorption spectrum by applying a voltage. Used for making different types of electro-optic devices. This is used to switch on and off the optical device by applying the bias. Used to make voltage tunable photodetector. This is used as phase modulator device. So, lot more applications are yet to be explored because this is a hot area of research. So, you like Enger generation can definitely think of contributing more in this area. So, thank you for now.